Okay, everybody, I promised in the last episode that I would give this little video talking about how you could work with the sprite sheet that I've provided to kind of use it as a template maybe to start your own work. So before we get into this next episode here in chapter one, where we're going to be adding this player sprite and the animations, you may want to be creating your own custom player. And so I'm going to show you how we can do that. I'm working here in a sprite today. There's other options. Um, some of the things I'm going to show are very specific to a sprite, but I'll try and share a little bit of general knowledge as well that will help you get started started, you know, working on your own sprite sheet if you're new. Okay, so I've got right here the hero PNG. I've opened up that uh, I've opened up that chapter one player foundation zip file, extracted it to my computer, and I'm gonna go ahead and just drag this into a sprite and we can just inspect this and get a little bit of uh, discussion going. So you can see when we drop a PNG into a sprite, obviously we've just got one layer and one frame, but you can see that what I've exported from my working file is this series of all these frames for the hero. And some of these frames at the beginning are repeated. That's by design because I'm not providing the full finished character here. I'm, I'm just providing kind of like a starting template. And so actually what's happening is, is we've got some idle and run or not run, but walk frames that I haven't animated. So it's just got a placeholder idle stance. You can see right over here, he begins his run cycle uh, frames and those continue down here on the second row. And this sprite sheet is four rows and it's 16 columns, okay? And there's only a few blank ones at the end. It looks like about four. Uh, you can see the last few frames we've got are my death animation for our poor hero here, okay? How this works, if you're, if you're new to making sprite sheets, is what we've done is we've animated a single character and then exported all of the frames of the animation into one file. And this is kind of a, a form of batching your, your artwork into one file for the sake of memory, because you don't really want to be loading, you know, in this case, if it's four by 16, then, then what is that? Like 128 frames. You don't want 128 separate files that you need to load into memory. It's much more efficient to load one file into memory and just change the quadrant of the image that you're looking at, okay? So that's why we do this. That's why we have these texture atlases. And let me just go ahead and show you my full working file for the hero real quick. So you can see here, I've got this file. This is what, what I work from originally as I'm working to create this. And we only see one frame at a time here in a sprite. And so, you know, if, if I cycle through these frames, you can see I've got a tag here to identify where my run is happening. And it's these frames 12 through 19. And you can play them back here within a sprite and see how it looks. And normally I have a little preview window open. Let me open that. And this preview can play the animation as well, so that while you're working on a specific frame, you know, you can see uh, how it's updating, right, in real time. So like, whoop, whoop, whoop. You can see now it's going to flash every time we hit that frame. Okay, and then when we export this, it creates a file like this. Just a side note, this background being blue is just because I've updated the preferences and settings on this file specifically, because that blue color, I think I prefer to the gray because I've got a lot of grays in here so I would get them lost. Okay, so assuming you wanna take this and use it as a template, this is what you can do. When you have this file open here in a sprite, you can come up to File, Import, and there's an Import Sprite Sheet option. You can see that it's Control and I is the shortcut. Okay, and what this does is because we have a PNG open, it's just gonna assume that we wanna import a sprite sheet from this file, otherwise you could select one here. And then there's some different options like horizontal strip, a vertical strip, by rows and by columns. And this is kind of telling a sprite how this sprite sheet is laid out. Okay, how we're gonna bring these things in. And this is done by rows. So you, you can see we've got rows and columns and how the animations go is it starts on the first row and goes across. Okay, so you wanna select by rows for this. The X and Y you don't need to change. They begin right at zero, zero. And it's an unconventional size, but I have these frames set up to be 80 pixels by 80 pixels okay so you will need to change that because it's going to be something else by default i don't know what it will be or if it will try and guess i can't remember you know it might be like 64 by 64 which clearly doesn't line up but you can see as i change that that we see these little indicators blue and green showing us how it's going to divide up this sprite sheet 
and we've got 16 columns and four rows. So you're going to need to set those appropriately as well. Although if you're setting the width and height properly, then that should just work itself out. We don't need to worry about padding or this uh, partial tiles at the bottom. We'll just go ahead and say import. And voila, you'll end up with a, with this. You can see that we've now got one frame at a time, and now we've got all these frames down at the bottom. Okay, so obviously the first several frames are just the idle and walk, but right here on frame 12 is where the run begins. And so you can go through, and you can see that the run ends right here on frame 19. And I want to point out, if we were to import this by columns instead of by rows, then it's going to get these all jumbled up. It's going to be in the wrong order. So if you run into that issue where you import it and it seems to be wrong, just make sure you've changed the options properly. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how we can do a couple things here that will help you work. So for the run animation, because it starts on 12 and goes to 19, we can select those and then right click and say new tag. And what this will allow us to do, we'll call this run. And you can see it's from and to an animation direction. And if it repeats, which it does forever. Okay, when we go ahead and do that, now if we hit play up here, you can see that it's doing the run cycle animation all the way through here. If we were to click outside the run, you can see it's just cycling and playing through the entire file. Okay, but this is handy to set up these tags so that if you're working on a specific piece of animation, it's just right here. One thing I see a lot of people do is they create a new file for each animation of their character, right? So they've got their character idle file and a character run file and a character attack file. And generally, I think this is a bad approach because it's a little bit more cumbersome and it's not going to allow you to export all of your frames into a single texture atlas as easily, right? Because you're going to have to merge them or do something. But if you keep all of your all of your animations and all of your frames in this same A sprite file here, then it's going to be a lot easier. And before we go any further, let's go ahead and save this. So let's save it as, and then you could just save this as like hero.a sprite. And by default, I would just pick a sprite files and then say save. And there you go. Now you've got a new a sprite file. So we've got this file. We've created a tag. Now you can go through and find all of the different uh, animations. We've got crouch from 20 to, what is that, 23 here? 24 through, where does it end? 28. These are our jump frames, okay? And then we've got a dash frame on 29. 30 is like taking damage. We've got some attack frames on 31 to 33. Uh, and then an alternate attack on 34, 35, and 36. So those are two different attacks. So you can go through and set up tags for all of those, right? I mean, like if I was doing this, I would just come here and I would right click, new tag, call it attack and so on and just go through and then you're going to go through and i'll just talk about them each real quick we've got a crouch attack okay two versions of that we've got a downward slam attack that we're going to use we've got three frames for a ball rolling from 44 to 46. we've got the hero death are the remaining frames okay okay and then what you're going to want to do next is start creating your own sprite. And let me just point out a couple things. You'll notice he's floating one pixel above the ground here. Uh, that's very intentional. If we have our pixel art butting up on the edges of the sprite in any way, then um, if we're using the canvas texture style drawing like I am for my project, sometimes we can get a little bit of a weird bleed, like where we'll see a tiny sliver of a line up here especially when it's playing through animations. And so I've given a one pixel padding around everything to avoid that. You may want to copy that as well. But what you can do is come in here and make a new layer. Okay. And then you can start creating your character on this new layer. And you may even want to make multiple. And I'll show you how I lay out my hero layers. So on the original working file, I've got quite a few layers. You can see I've got an arm back layer right, which is the arm behind everything. I've got my legs, I've got a waist layer, I've got a top layer, I've got a head layer, eyes and hair, as well as this arm front. And so if I break down this idle, and let me just turn these off and turn them on one at a time. Okay, so you can see I've got the arm front, I've got hair, I've got eyes and the head. So those combine to look like this. We've got the top, the torso, the waist, his legs, the arm back. And what this does is it allows me to edit one piece without destroying the others. And it's really useful when I when I want to do something like, say, maybe I want the arm position to be really similar on the attack as it was in the run on one of the frames. Well, I can just copy the arm, but maybe I want the body and the torso to be different. Okay. So I've really broken down my animation into lots of layers. 
You don't necessarily need that many, but I would suggest having a couple layers. And then you can use this sprite sheet layer as a reference. And there's a couple things you could do. You could come in here and double click and turn down the opacity if you want, if you want to barely see it. Or um, you can turn it on and off with the eyeball. You may even want to come to this lock icon and lock the layer so you don't ac accidentally draw on it. You can see I've got that can't touch this. <laughs> Bump, bump, can't touch this. So then you could come onto this layer, like I was saying, and just pick a brush, pick a color. It loaded the palette from the sprite sheet, which is kind of goofy, but you know, you could run with that and you can start drawing your own character here and make him as snazzy as you want. Okay. And just go through and you can start working on your own animations. Now, once you're done with that, it's pretty simple to export it. You can come up here to file, export, export sprite sheet. And you can see that we've got some options here. Right now it's exporting the sprite sheet by rows and it's just doing one big long sprite sheet. And what we want to do is uh, we can put some constraints on here. You, and this, I don't know what it'll be. It might be horizontal strip by default for you. By rows is good. That's how, that's how we're working, right? By rows. And what that means is rows first, then column second. Uh, if we do it by column, then you can see it's gonna make our animation frames go down and then across. Okay, so here we go. We're gonna put some constraints on here. We'll do a fixed number of columns and you're gonna to wanna to do 16 columns to make it easy to follow along with my tutorials. Unless you feel like you can work around that and then pick whatever you want. But this is gonna give us a nice width of like 1280, I think, for this sprite sheet. And then you can select in here which layers and frames you want to export. Generally, when we're doing a character sprite sheet like this or an enemy, we wanna do all the frames all layers or all visible layers is a good way to go. And if you do visible layers, that's pretty nice because then what you can do is if you're working and you, let's say you've got five layers, um, you can just turn off this layer down here for the player that you don't want as a reference. And then when you go to export it, he won't be there, right? Okay, so let's do our rows, fixed number of columns at 16. Sprite, visible layers, blah, blah, blah. You will probably need to check this if it's not checked. Well, you do if you want to file, right? Output to file, and now it's going to call it hero.png. And so if I were to export this, it's going to say, do you want to overwrite the file? Um, and I'll go ahead and say, yeah. And there we've exported that sprite sheet, and then I'll show you the file. Okay, you can see here's my new hero sprite sheet. It's the same dimensions as the other one. It's kind of lame, though, because it's just that one goofy little dude here but that's how you're going to export your sprite sheet and have it ready to bring into the game in the future so i guess word of warning if you don't want to overwrite my sprite sheet then maybe change the name that you save it to or something like that okay but there we have it so this is your homework before the next video go ahead and work on this even if you do just a little bit get familiar with how these sprite sheets work it'll make the animations make a lot more sense by the time we get into the episode where we're doing that so have fun and as always, we'll see you next time.